Hey Y nerds, my name is Kay and I like to read a lot and welcome to another episode of Kay Reads A Lot. We're trying another setup this week so I don't look as orange, but you can definitely see I'm using a ring light because of my glasses. <laughs> oh well. Um, so this week I wanted to talk to you all about Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, um, specifically because we had the inauguration this week. Yay, inauguration! And this book kind of focuses on um, relations between the United States and the UK. So I thought it would be fun to talk about. Plus, this is a really fun rom-com and it's just, it's good to read things that are light sometimes, you guys. It's just good. Um, so first of all, this book came out May 14th of 2019, so I'm only two years behind, not too bad. And it's 421 pages, so it is big. Um, but it's great. Uh, it also won the Goodreads Choice Award for Romance and for Debut Novel in 2019, and it got the Alex Award in 2020. So it's done pretty well for itself, I must say. And I just want to do a little shout out. You can kind of see, it says right here, this is an advanced reader copy. Um, I actually won this book in a Goodreads giveaway two years ago. Two, two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. And it was one of the first giveaways I'd ever entered. I just clicked on it. I didn't even realize it would work. And all of a sudden I had a book in my mail. So uh, if you all don't know, that's like Goodreads like best kept secret is that they have giveaways that you can enter into and get free books. Um, you can also get free books through a bunch of other means. Um, if you do reviews like I do here, you could register for like a NetGalley account or an Edelweiss account and get free advanced reader copies that way. Uh, sometimes if you follow the right people on Twitter, they do giveaways all the time and that's how you win things like this. I have never won anything since then. This is the only book I've ever won on Goodreads. So if you do do the giveaways, just be prepared to be a little disappointed because you, you don't win. You never win. <laughs> this was a fluke and I was honestly just shocked, shocked that I got this book. So let's talk about it. So red, white, and royal blue. I keep saying red, white, and royal blue because it's all rah, rah, rah. <laughs> um, this book follows Alex Claremont and a prince over here. Um, Oh my God, I totally blanked on the prince's name. Oh, I'm doing really good. Prince Henry, not not the same Prince Henry, not Prince Henry Windsor. This is a different Prince Henry. It's a family name. Anyway, um, Alex's mom just became the president of the United States and it's a big deal. First of all, in this novel, she's the first female president. Woo -woo. Second of all, um, she's like, he's Latino, she's Latina. Um, and she's divorced, I think. So it's like a lot, a lot of things going on. So in this world, we live in an idealized society where people who are divorced and marginalized uh, and female can be president. So it's a good book just starting with that. Anyway, Alex meets Prince Henry at some party where they're supposed to be kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Schmoozing uh, for their... Uh, families and they they should be friends because they're both like royalty I mean this one's literally royalty he's just kind of royalty in the United States I'm gonna put the book down so I stop holding it up so they meet at a party they kind of know about each other they kind of hate each other they want nothing to do with each other and they start hanging out and like being friends to like get the paparazzi off their backs and to kind of like be like listen stop like we can be friends, we can pretend to be friends, whatever. And then it turns into enemies to lovers. <laughs> and it's great. So they, the two boys start a relationship. They don't really want to tell anybody about it. And that's fair um, because it's a big deal for both of the countries that they represent for these two guys to be in a relationship together. Um, that's, that is the plot basically boiled down to its very straightforward points. Um, I could read the back. I'm not going to, cause obviously like I, that's, that's what I really remember from this book. Uh, I will point out that there's really great bisexual representation in this book, um, which is awesome. And, uh, Casey McQuiston wrote a really great romance. So like... Yay. <laughs> anyway, pick up the book if you want to read more about it. Um, we're going to talk more about it in this video. So, so the tropes. 
Uh, there's only a few tropes in this, not nothing too, too crazy, which is good. Uh, and I'll go through them really quick and I'm going to try to relate my tropes that I wrote down to the book. Honestly, I wrote this review like a year ago. Um, so sometimes it's hard for me to place the things and I read this book two years ago. So we're going to try. Be pa patient with me, please. Um, so the first trope I have on here is communication is key. Um, basically the two main characters like don't talk about their feelings until they have to talk about their feelings. It's great. I usually hate this trope when like to, if you would just speak to each other, like things would work out fine, but no, but in this book it's used perfectly. Like the tension is perfect. Um, the next one we have is dumb protagonist is actually prodigy in disguise. I never get to use this trope. Um, from what I remember, Alex is really smart, like really freaking smart, but he's smart in unconventional ways. And so his smarts are like kind of pushed to the wayside and he feels like garbage about it. Um, we also have enemies to lovers, which I explained earlier. Um, Alex and Henry are, they start out the story hating each other and they end the story loving each other. It's great. Um, there's also fake dating in here. Now in this book, it's not necessarily fake dating because they do keep their real relationship a secret, um, but they are fake friend dating. So they are like meeting up to like hang out and be friends and then it turns into a relationship. So it's really great. Um, we also have having Bianca for your older sister. Nobody gets what this trope means. Uh, this is in reference to uh, 10 Things I Hate About You, where Bianca Stratford is the better sibling of the two Stratford sisters. Um, in this book, it reflects the same way. Alex has a sister who is better in every way, shape, and form, uh, and he kind of feels threatened by that. So, And the last one we have is Masquerade, which is when a main character pretends to be something they're not. Um, unfortunately for Prince Henry in this book, uh, he has to pretend to be straight, and he hates it um, because he's gay. So... That's, that's the mask, right? That's the mask he wears. Um, and that's kind of the mask he has to like take off at the end. Um, so that's it for the tropes. Uh, I hope, I forgot to explain what the tropes were at the beginning of this. So as always, you can find the real definition for the tropes down below. Um, these are a set of um, descriptors that I use to describe books to help people find books that they love. Um, it was curated by me and my friends, hi Tessa, um, as well as some librarians that I know and from the internet using like um, fan fiction websites to come up with these things. So that's where all of these weird things came from. I say this every video and one day I'm going to make a video about all the tropes and we're just going to have a slideshow. It's just going to be the way it is. <laughs> but for now, you're just going to have to deal with me talking about it. It's the Rita Likes. It's time for Rita Likes. One day I will have a theme song, but for now you're going to have to deal with me singing poorly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, for this for the read-alikes, because I'm a librarian. I like to recommend books to people, especially when they like a book that I've read. For this book, we got one read-alike from Goodreads and one read-alike from Novelist and one read-alike from yours truly, um, because I am, again, trying to get better at recommending books. There you go. So, um, on Goodreads, when you type in red, white, and royal blue, you will find other books that people have liked that they've also read this book. So on Goodreads, we have Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I understand why this book is recommended. Um, this book is a fan fiction from Fangirl, which is Rainbow Rowell's other book um, based off of the... The fan fiction is is based off of a show that's a fan fiction of Harry Potter, I'm pretty sure. I've never read Carry On. I've heard great things. Um, but Carry On is the fan fiction that the main character from Fangirl is writing. <laughs> it's so complicated. But it is about two boys who fall in love. It's enemies to lovers. So I totally get how these two books relate to each other. <laughs> Um, for novelists, we have Royal Wedding by Meg Cabot. I know nothing about this book, so I am very sorry. I cannot talk about it at all. I am assuming it has something to do with royals, um, with wedding not at your station, which is kind of the themes from Red, White, and Royal Blue. Um, but I'm pretty sure Royal Wedding is not queer at all, which is fine. Novelist, if you're trying to just get right, like some of the main points, the plot points and the theme just with that, that's fine. I totally get why that was recommended. My recommendation is Heartstopper by Alex Osman. Heartstopper is a webcomic that you can read for free um, on, I think on Webtoons, pretty sure. 
uh, if not Google, if you'll find it. I own the first two volumes in softcover. So I have them there. You can't see behind this curtain. I have a bookcase and they're on that bookcase. Um, so really great story about two boys who fall in love. There's not enemies to lovers in that one. It's more um, friends to lovers um, and it's not fake dating, but it is a queer story about two boys who fall for each other. One of them is bisexual. So there's your connection with that. Um, and that series takes place in the UK. Um, which is another connection to Red, White, and Royal Blue, although Red, White, and Royal Blue takes place both in DC and in the UK, um, in London, I'm pretty sure, specifically. Um, so there's your big differences with those. But they kind of relate. They have a love story. Um, you know, they, they connect. Anyway, if you've read any of these books and you love them, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, if you disagree that the recommendation lines up, that's fine. Whatever, man. If you have another recommendation for me that you want me to read, let me know and I will add it to my ever expanding TBR list. <laughs>And now for everyone's favorite part, the part of the review video where I give this book a 10 out of 10. It's not happening. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I know. I know. So my only issue with this book, my only issue is not really with the book. <laughs> so points off for me, I guess. Um, I don't get why there's a genre called new adults. This book is considered a new adult book. Um, a new adult book. Let me see. So this does not have an age on the back. I thought it did. So anyway, um, new adult is a new term that the publishing industry has come up with. And by new, I mean in the last five years. Um, YA means young adults. NA means new adults. What's the difference between young adult and new adult? Blah. Um, in my opinion, I think that YA books should be called teen books and new adult books should be called YA um, because new adult, young adult, I mean, I feel like new adult is supposed to address people in their mid to late twenties or early to mid twenties. Um, I'm over 30. I read YA. I consider myself a young adult, even though I'm really not, I'm not a teenager. I, you know, I just feel like YA, I feel like that's a term for older teens. Unfortunately, I'm the only person who feels this way. The industry doesn't feel this way. Libraries don't feel this way. I'm literally the only one. Maybe I'm not. But anyway, I love everything about this book aside from the fact that it's labeled new adults. <laughs> Casey McQuiston is a wonderful writer. Um, they wrote this amazing book. Obviously, I'm in love with it. A lot of other people are in love with it. It's the book that the queer community needed that we were drowning for, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it, it's really good. So um, it was released two years ago and we didn't really have bisexual representation back then. Sad for all of us, but we've gotten it now. And from this book forward, I've seen a lot more. It's like an uptick in bi representation. So I think my opinion, which could be wrong, but that's what opinions are is that this book kind of sparked that in the new adult YA um, genre. Uh, I also like that the author had to make up a royal family, technically, because you can't really depict the royal family without like coming over under scrutiny um, or being sued, I think. So um, Casey McQuiston came up with like a random royal family that is the royal family. So they're the Windsors, but not. Um, you know, and I, I think we can kind of understand that we see what's going on with like the Windsors and how crazy is the wrong word, how intense they can be about like things that depict them. Um, so I think Casey McQuiston did a great job with that too. Um, I also really liked the ending of the book. Um, I liked that I will spoil that it's a happy ending and you can take that as you want to. Um, and I thought the characters were really well written. Um, you definitely feel for both families, um, their struggles and what they all go through. And it's, it's just a really great book. A lot of people were raving about this book two years ago when it came out. It deserves the high praise. I'm also just tired of giving books 10 out of 10 because I feel like I'm a bad reviewer, but that's me. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let me know if you read this book. Let me know if you like this book in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, y'all. Um, we're really close to getting 100 subscribers. I'd really like to hit that mark because uh, then I can, you know, change some things about the channel. 
and uh, that could be really cool. And if we get to 100, maybe I'll do a giveaway. Maybe you could win a book like I did. But we can't get there until we get to 100. So anyway, I hope you guys had a great inauguration and uh, peace out, Lionards.